Thank you for joining my brief presentation today. As it's only 10 minutes, I will um, start, as always, by referencing our forward-looking statements on page two. And then I'll begin with a high-level overview of the company. So Endeavor Silver is a company that's been in operations for, for 15 years. And today we are a mid-tier silver producer with four operating mines in Mexico and gold as a byproduct credit. Uh, the same core management team that formed the company 15 years ago is the same team that's still in place. And the, the management team has been very successful at navigating the company through both bull and bear markets. And that's very, very important in our business. So this year, we're guiding to produce about 7.4 to 8.2 million ounces of silver equivalent metal from a revenue split of about 60% silver and 40% gold. Speaking to point number two, uh, the main focus this year has been very much so on optimizing our operations and improving our financial performance, and I will touch on that in more detail later. However, the main um, concept that I would like to leave you here, the main part of the investment thesis for Endeavor Silver is our compelling growth profile. We have a very special Greensfield discovery in our portfolio that is now development ready and it will potentially double our production while significantly reducing our costs. So while the rest of our, our peers in the space are transacting to fund this type of runway growth, we already have it in the portfolio and we already have it in place. From time to time, as a company, we uh, do look at M&A opportunities, so we are on the acquisitive side. And specifically for us, we favor transactions on the asset level more so than the corporate level because we feel that generates more value. Lastly, our stock offers an industry-leading beta to the price of silver. In terms of our capital structure, we have 135 million shares out, which for a company that's been in operations for 15 years, that's very impressive. So we are very shareholder focused from that regard. We're listed on several exchanges, including the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange, where the majority of our liquidity comes from. And additionally, we're also listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. As an executive management team, we're a very investor friendly company. So we get out there to share the story several times the year internationally to make sure that new and current investors are well informed of what's going on. And for this reason, we have a very liquid stock. So right now we're averaging uh, just under 5 million shares a day traded amongst all of the exchanges, which is very significant. Uh, we've got nine banks that cover the stock on both the Canadian and the American side. In terms of our core assets, we are comprised of four underground mines in Mexico, one development project, and six exploration projects between Mexico and Chile. So we have a very loaded uh, development pipeline to fuel future growth. And the reason why we have this runway growth in place is because our CEO, Bradford Cook, which a lot of you may know, um, as Jay said, he's been coming to the conference for over 10 years, and he's an educator and an advocate of our industry, very well regarded and well respected. Um, he's a geologist by background, and he's got over 40 years experience in the business. His expertise is on finding new discoveries, and he has a successful track record of doing just that. So this is why one of the main differentiators for our story is that we have this amazing growth profile in place. Touching on recent highlights, as I mentioned, we are fully focused on optimizing our operations. We've actually had operationally a tough year. Uh, we encountered some operational obstacles at two of our four mines, and in the second quarter, we announced significant changes across all of the mines, everything from a reduction in the workforce to make it more uh, efficient, to uh, changes in the mine plans, changes in uh, mine site personnel, and there was a number of changes. So we're starting to see traction from these changes now, and we do expect a full recovery towards the end of the year. As a quick recap of current news, we purchased additional lands at Guanacaví to augment mill feed with high-grade ore. We announced commercial production at mine number four, the El Compass Mine in Zacatecas. And we received our final tailings permit for the very exciting Terranera project, which marked uh, a major milestone for the project path moving forward. 
And that's actually a really good uh, lead in as to what I want to discuss next, and that is the growth side of the business. Um, that's the area that I'm most passionate about, and it certainly will be the main value driver for our stock. So the Terranera asset is located in Jalisco State, which is about one hour away from the resort town of Puerto Vallarta. And it's a very unique asset in that it's high grade, it's got high margins, it's got both a gold and a silver component, and it truly is a district scale opportunity. However, this year, our focus is shifting from exploration to the development side of the business as we gear up for the start of construction. To date, we've published two technical reports on the project and we are working towards a final iteration of an updated PFS and that document will give the board enough confidence to approve a production decision. In the meantime, we're also in working in the final stages of securing a very attractive debt financing package and that package uh, will kickstart our construction which is about an 18th month schedule. So as we advance this project and move it forward, every time we publish a new report, the project is getting bigger and better, and we're getting more confidence and comfort around the inputs. So here you can see very robust project economics paired with a 12-year mine life, and that certainly secures the growth of the company. I should note that since we will be providing one more updated PFS, you, you can expect that some of these uh, parameters will change slightly, but they will be comparable. The showstopper for this asset is the low operating cost profile. So here you can see projected all-in sustaining costs of $1.36 per ounce net of the gold credit. And that's really driven by a function of a very rich grade profile. So on average, we are averaging 400 grams per ton um, as the grade for this asset. And the scheduled production is approximately 5 million silver equivalent ounces. So taking a little bit of a closer look at the deposit, we have two defined ore bodies in place. There is the Lelutz vein and the Terra Nera vein. And the Lelutz, the Lelutz vein at the bottom, the magenta color uh, represents very, very high grade. So we're talking about a kilo a ton. And this deposit um, will be used as a sweetening agent to front end load the production profile. That is one of the key changes in the new PFS. And you can see we're doing ex exactly just that. So the grade profile doesn't dip below 400 grams per ton until after year five. And the very act of cherry picking the high grade material and bringing it up to the front of the project is one of the best ways to improve cash flow for our shareholders and returns and improve uh, the project economics. I should also note that with regards to some of the major long lead equipment items, um, we have secured deposits to ensure that we stay on track with the schedule. And then getting into our operations very briefly. The Gwenesavi mine located in Durango, this is our oldest mine and for this reason has been underperforming and generating disappointing financial results this year. However, the key is that we have a plan in place to remedy the issue and the transition is taking place this year. So what you're seeing in the black blocks represents 15 years of mining and we're mining essentially deep, low grade, high cost ore bodies and in the meantime we're de developing fresh new ore bodies outlined in red. So the new ore bodies are closer to surface so the cost of extraction is less, they're thicker veins, they're richer grade and all of that will bode well for returning the mine back to a profitable state. So the Malachi mine is already sending 400 ton per day to the mill. Santa Cruz sewer is on its way to ramping up to 300 ton per day to the mill. And then the areas outlined in the blue are the new land lease packages that we recently secured. So we're already mining from the PNE area. It's closer to surface and easier to get at. And we're drilling in the Porvenir Quattro area. So it's the combination of the fresh new ore bodies. Um, that will really mark the turnaround for the Guanacivi mine. And as we demonstrate to the market um, visible improvement, there certainly represents a valuation, um, an opportunity for a valuation upside on this mine. Moving on to Bolinitos, this mine has historically been very profitable for us. The reason is because it's got a very healthy gold credit. So you can see here more than 50% of the production comes from the gold side. 
And very comfortably, we've been able to operate at less than $5 on an all-in sustaining cost basis until the last two quarters where the mine ran into some unforeseen issues. And so the solution here is very straightforward. Uh, it essentially just requires a resequencing of the mine plan to allow for better blending of low arsenic ore. And this turnaround is taking place right now. We purchased, leased, and rented new equipment, and this asset has management's full attention as well. So we do expect that this mine will get back into the green um, fairly soon here. RL Kubo Mine is our top performing mine this year and last. And uh, we put out an announcement at the end of last year where we pulled back on output this year as we continue to explore for new reserves as the mine has been operating in an environment with limited reserves. And then moving on to our fourth mine and newest mine, the El Compass Mine in Zacatecas, it attained commercial production in the first quarter of this year. And it's our smallest mine, but it's accretive in that it does also have a very nice gold credit. And it's very scalable. So we're only using about half of the potential mill capacity that could be available to us, subject to finding new reserves. And a consolidation opportunity in the districts also exists for us. So in summary, as I said, this is very brief. Uh, what you're getting when you purchase Endeavor Silver is a mid-tier silver producer, um, a company that is run by a very well-regarded and well-respected management team, layered on that, an industry-leading growth profile that secures the future of the company, um, a strong balance sheet, no debt, uh, over $20 million in cash, and an industry-leading beta to the price of silver. And because I didn't get to touch on all of the other exploration projects in our portfolio, I would be happy to have a more detailed discussion at my booth. Thanks.